Hi all, welcome to Freshers World YouTube channel. Today we are going to see some frequently asked questions in MNC technical interviews for Freshers. And in these rounds, panelists will or may ask to write logics based on your desired programming languages based on your skill set. Suppose if you write, uh, you know, C or C++ or Java in your resume, then the panelist may ask that to write a specific logic in your desired programming language. So in this round, very frequently asked logic are palindrome, Fibonacci series, factorial and many more. So in this video, we'll see about, first we'll see about palindrome. So what is palindrome? So basically palindrome is a sequence of characters which reads the same when read from either directions. For example, madam is a palindrome where if we reverse the word madam, it spells the same. Uh, so there are three basic steps for this logic. First. Reverse the given number or string. Second, compare the original number or string with the reversed one. And third, if both matches, then yes, it is a palindrome or not. So now let's have a quick look on the logic. As I mentioned in the beginning, it's a sequence of characters which can either be a number or string. So first, let's take a look for the sequence of strings. So now if you see my screen, I will be using Java as a default programming language to show the basic logics. So here I will be showing the implementation of a function for palindrome which will take input as a string and it will return if that given string is a palindrome or not. I will be using a boolean method where my method's name is, is palindrome which will take string as an input. Here a uh, string str is a user input like whatever the string the user will enter. So this method will check and tell whether the entered string is a palindrome or not. So here I will be using string buffer class. So I am using string buffer here because this have some default methods which I will be using to append the original input string into reverse manner. So here I will be using a for loop where my variable i will be the input string length input string length minus 1 and i my the variable i should be greater than equals to 0 and i will be traversing i as a decremental operation so here inside the for loop, I will be appending my input string in a reverse manner to the new string buffer reverse str. So reverse str dot append character. So here I will be adding string dot char at index i. So here in this way, I will be appending uh, in the reverse order which is in the descending order of the input string to this reverse string. Once the execution of this for loop is completed, the value of the reverse str will be the reverse of the original input str. So here I will I'll just add a simple if check so that uh, to check whether if the uh, reverse string is equal to the input string or not. So here uh, str dot equals reverse str if yes then I have to return true. If not else I will be returning false. So if I call this method inside my main method, so this will give whether my input string is a palindrome or not based on the if check. So now let's see how to check if a given number is a palindrome or not. So here I will be using a boolean method to take an input as a number and it will return true or false after checking if the input number is a palindrome or not. So I am taking a boolean. Where my input parameter is of type long 
and so inside this similar to string i'll be using a new variable called reverse num to store the reverse of the input number so here i'll be using while loop where my condition inside the while loop will be the input number should always be greater than 0 and inside my while loop i'll be going to use a new uh, one more variable called reminder where i'll be storing the modulus of the input number and then in the reverse number where in the reverse number i'll be adding the reverse number into 10 plus the reminder and then i will be again dividing the number by 10 here we are doing this logic because whatever the input number will be in the decimal format so that when we will take the reminder and then add the reminder to, to the logic we will get the exact reverse of the decimal number once the while loop execution is completed reverse number will be holding the value of number in the reverse manner so here again we'll be adding an if check to check whether the reverse number is equals to our input number if yes then we will be returning true else we will be returning false So here we are done with the palindrome for string and number. So now let's have a look for the sample logic for Fibonacci series, which is also the most frequently asked questions in the most of the technical interviews. So what is a Fibonacci series? Fibonacci series is a series of number such that each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. For example, uh, if 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. If you see the pattern here, 0 plus 1 is 1. As I mentioned above, which is the sum of the preceding two numbers. So here I will be showing you the logic for the Fibonacci series up to some n number of numbers. So here if you see in my example, it have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So here if you see my screen, I have I have written the Fibonacci series till 6 digits. So here I will be showing you the logic to write the Fibonacci series for n number of digits. So let's assume my input n number of digits will be 10. So here I will be showing you the two methods of writing a Fibonacci series. One is by swapping and one is by recursion. Swapping is very simple. Here I will be using three variables. First to hold 0, second to hold 1 because these are the two initial numbers for Fibonacci series. So I will be using int i which holds the value as 0, then j which holds the value for 1, then a variable called count to hold the sum of i and j. So here I will be using a for loop where I will be using count as 0. And my count should always be less than equals to the number of digits, maximum number of digits. And then I will be incrementing count by 1. So inside this, I will be taking one more local variable called result. Where I will be summing up i and j. After summing up, I have to swap the values of i and j. So I will be initializing the value of j to i. Then I will be initializing the value of result to j. So until this for loop executes till my max number of digits n, the values will be summing up i and j and it will be stored to result. I will be swapping the numbers again to, to sum up so that when I print this result, it will come in this manner.
so now let's go to one more method of getting a fibonacci series which is recursion recursion is basically calling the same method multiple times until and unless the loop is completed so here i'll be using a method called fibonacci which will return the type of int and it will take the input parameter as my max number of digit which is n so inside this method implementation if my max number of digits is equals to 1 then i'll be returning n because i need to print only one number else in my return statement i'll be calling the same method fibonacci by input parameter as num minus 1 plus num minus 2 so here we will be calling this method in a recursive manner until and unless our number value will be equals to 1 once this number value equals to 1 we will be returning this variable number okay so sorry there is a correction here will be returning num since for the initial execution of this method we have to call from call it from main method so we can we can print the fibonacci series in the main method itself sys out fibonacci which is my method name of my input number which is 10 so thank you all i hope you like the session please do let us know if you have any questions in the comment box so if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe now we'll be coming up with much more interesting videos for you do like the video and subscribe to our channel thank you